GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, entered into force in 2018, it increased the possibilities we have to protect how our personal data are obtained and handled. Since then, a number of decisions have been made by national data protection authorities on how this applies in the education context. In this video, I will highlight key decisions that have been made regarding data protection in schools. These cases look at, one, using facial recognition to identify students, two, processing students' fingerprints, and three, the security measures schools need to take to protect personal data. Before I dive into these cases, however, a very brief bit of context on what the GDPR says on the processing of the personal data of children. Recital 38 of the GDPR emphasizes that the personal data of children require special protection. Therefore, EU data protection authorities take into account the particular vulnerabilities of children when they consider the degree to which a school's data processing system might invade the privacy of students or put students' privacy at risk. Under Article 6 of the GDPR, the processing of personal data is possible if there is a legal basis for it. This includes the existence of a legitimate interest or a public interest in proce processing the data. Generally, when schools process the personal data of students, they do so as part of an effort to carry out a task that is in the interest of the safety, security, or development of the child, such as monitoring immunizations, keeping attendance records, and developing online learning platforms. That a legal base exists does not mean, however, that this processing cannot violate fundamental data protection law principles. For example, Schools may breach the GDPR when they do not adequately secure the personal data they have collected, or collect more data than they need for a specific purpose. Processing people's biometric data requires a special legal basis. The standard of Article 6 is not enough. Biometric data can confirm the unique identification of a person by processing physical, psychological, or behavioral characteristics. Collecting and processing people's biometric data can be particularly invasive, so to protect people's privacy, the GDPR sets a higher standard. Finally, there are standards on how data should be stored. A school's data storage method should ensure that students' personal data are not accessible to unauthorized users and safeguard their integrity and confidentiality. Now I will highlight a number of key decisions that have been made on these topics across Europe. On the topic of the use of facial recognition technology by schools, I am highlighting two decisions, one from Sweden and one from France. In Sweden, at the secondary education board in a local municipality used facial recognition to monitor attendance at a secondary school. To monitor attendance, 22 students were monitored by cameras as they entered the classroom every day. This was an experiment to see if this could save lesson time during the school day. The students' facial images and first and last names were processed and stored with consent from their guardians. In France, a regional authority launched an experimental security policy in two high schools, one in Marseille and one in Nice, installing facial recognition gates at the entrance of the schools. The gates identified students using facial images and also monitored unidentified visitors. The students whose data would be processed had given their consent for this. Both the Swedish and French Data Protection Authority found that using facial recognition technology to monitor students breaches the GDPR, specifically Article 5 and Article 9. Article 5 sets out key principles restricting how personal data can be processed, including limitations on permissible justifications for collecting people's personal data. Under Article 5, Personal data processing must be adequate, relevant and limited to what is necessary to carry out a specific purpose. Article 9 GDPR makes clear that identifying people by processing their biometric personal data is only permissible if strict conditions are met. One of those conditions is explicit consent, which is what the schools in Sweden and France use to justify their facial recognition experiments. However, Due to the imbalance of power between the data subject, the students, and the data controller, the school, in the context of a school monitoring its students, 
both the French and Swedish Data Protection Authority rejected consent as a legal basis for the processing of biometric data in schools. The Swedish Data Protection Authority also considered whether processing students' biometric data might be lawful because it could be considered necessary for reasons of substantial public interest under state law. But, while monitoring attendance is an important task in the public interest, using facial recognition as a method to do so was not considered justified because it was disproportionately invasive of students' data protection rights. This was also found by both data protection authorities more generally. Both the Swedish and the French authority found that facial recognition technology infringed upon the personal integrity of students to a degree that was disproportionate to the purposes the schools were pursuing by implementing the technology. The Swedish Data Protection Authority went further and found that, given the scope and early stages of facial recognition technology, the schools should have consulted with the authority for advice on the high risk for the students in using it. We'll now take a look at a decision concerning the collection of fingerprints in a school in Poland. Primary school number two, in Gdansk, processed the fingerprints of 680 children as a method of verifying meal payment at the school canteen. The school obtained consent from all the students whose biometric data was processed. Four children opted out of biometric verification and certified their payment using an alternative method. However, these students were required to wait at the back of the lunch queue until all the students using biometric data verification had passed through the canteen. The Polish Data Protection Authority found that the school did not have a lawful basis for processing the personal biometric data of students entering the canteen. It specifically found that the practice violated Article 9 and Article 5 of the GDPR. The opinion also highlights the special protection the personal uh, data of children require, as set out in Recital 38 of the GDPR. Like the Swedish and French schools did in the cases we've just discussed, the Polish school argued that it had obtained consent. The Polish Data Protection Authority also rejected this argument, stating that consent cannot serve as a lawful basis for the school's fingerprint program because students who did not consent to biometric data processing had to wait at the back of the canteen queue. By treating students who refused to consent unequally, the school pressured students to consent to the biometric identification. The Data Protection Authority also did not find valid the argument that biometric data collection was necessary for the school to carrying out its task of organizing and administering the school canteen. They emphasized that there were alternative methods available to verify meal payment that did not require biometric data processing. Therefore, the fingerprint system invaded the privacy of students to an extent that was not justified by the system's purpose. Finally, the Data Protection Authority found that the school had violated the data minimization principle that was set out in Article 5 of the GDP especially in light of the particular vulnerabilities of children as data subjects, the school did not properly tailor the scope of the personal data collection to its purpose. It was considered to be disproportionate. The last decision I'll discuss looks at the security measures that schools need to take to protect the personal data of their students. In 2019, the Education Agency of the Municipality of Oslo launched an app that allowed parents and students to send messages to school staff. Soon after the app launched, Aften Posten, a widely read Norwegian news outlet, broke the news that the app contained a major security hole. Anyone who could log into the portal could potentially gain access to every communication that had been sent through the app, as well as the personal information of 63,000 school children in Oslo. Article 5 of the GDPR requires that data be processed in a manner that ensures the appropriate security of personal data. The Norwegian Data Protection Authority found that the education agency had breached the GDPR by launching an app without properly testing it to ensure the information and communication stored on it would be secure. The authority also found that the education agency breached Article 32 of the GDPR which requires data collectors to ensure a level of security appropriate to the risk. Especially in light of the special vulnerability of children, 
the education agency did not take sufficient measures to ensure the confidentiality and integrity of its messaging system. The decision points out that, in addition to poor login security, the app was set up for users to update staff on the child's absence from school by freely typing information into a textbox. There were no technical measures in place, such as a drop-down menu or tick boxes, to ensure that users would not enter confidential medical information into the app. The Data Protection Authority imposed a fine on the education agency. It imposed a similar fine on the municipality of Bergen, where data security insufficiencies exposed the personal data of students by allowing unauthorized users to access the school's administrative system, as well as the digital learning platform where students' classwork, evaluation, and personal data were stored. Some general themes can be seen in these decisions from different data protection authorities. In considering whether a school violated the data protection rights of students, data protection authorities of Sweden, France, Poland, and Norway all drew attention to the relationship between a school and its students. Schools are in a position of authority when they monitor students' data, and students are in a position of dependency. The power imbalance in this relationship will most often invalidate consent as a lawful condition for biometric data processing. Also, the particularly sensitive and vulnerable nature of children's data processed in a school context often relating to issues such as health, identity, and development, requires schools to protect students' personal data with particularly secure technical measures. Educational authorities carry out many tasks that require collecting personal data from students. Technologies, including biometric technologies like facial recognition and fingerprinting, present new opportunities for schools to expedite processes like attendance monitoring, school security, and lunch payment. The recent GDPR fines imposed on schools for implementing such programs underscore that schools cannot sacrifice the privacy of its students for expediency. Schools must ensure that whenever, whatever measure they adopt safeguards children's rights and is necessary and proportionate to the purpose pursued by the measure. If there are alternative measures that do not require the processing of sensitive personal data and those measures can achieve the same results, then the processing of sensitive personal data is not likely to be justified